Consider supporting Archeosoup on Patreon for as little as a dollar per month. Link available in the video description. Thank you. Welcome back to the A to Z of archaeology. Today we're looking at the letter R, and R stands for Rescue Archaeology. Now, uh, I don't know about you, but for me, the term Rescue Archaeology conjures up a very particular image. Hanging over a vat of toxic waste is a Bronze Age Loop Palace axe, supported in turn by a string which is at the mercy of a candle. It is the fiendish Teddy who has taken this archaeology hostage and trapped it in a fiendish device. Surely it is doomed to melt and be forever lost to a vat of toxic waste. But what's this? A hero has entered the fray. The Teddy immediately responds, Look at your archaeology now! A tense standoff begins between the two mortal enemies. Eyes locked, weapons trained, who will break first? The teddy is world-renowned as a staring champion, but the gunman is determined to rescue the archaeology. Our hero can no longer wait, the deadlock is broken, and the teddy suffers at the hands of righteous retribution. What follows cannot be responsibly shown by this channel, but needless to say, the evil teddy bear gets what he deserves. But is our hero lost in vengeance? The string breaks, and our hero catches the axe just in time. The day has been saved. Don't worry, no bears were hurt in the making of that fantasy. Um, however, rescue archaeology is much more serious than that. It is often a high-stakes uh, pursuit, uh, which is extremely time-pressured. Essentially, rescue archaeologists, more often than not, are desperately trying to get out of the ground as much information as possible before that resource disappears entirely. Antiquarian Charles Roach Smith can be considered a pioneer of rescue archaeology. When the sewers were being laid in Victorian London, workmen were frequently finding objects from the city's Roman past. Charles deterred these men and the local authorities from simply selling the objects on, and, for example, many thousands of Roman coins were collected together for the benefit of the public. Just as in Charles's time, today rescue archaeology often takes place when a building project has been announced. Archaeologists will get together and decide which parts of the site are likely to contain valuable material history, and they hope to intervene before it is destroyed by the processes of a building site. This process is often very highly time-pressured, because most developers don't like to delay their project for long, and because of this, the two competing interest groups can sometimes be at odds. There are entire journals dedicated to the practice of rescue archaeology, and highlighting its value as a limited resource, much like oil, the only difference being that most oil contractors don't have to work with the pressure of a building team bearing down on them breathing down their necks. Some of the most famous archaeological sites and finds are the result of rescue archaeology and these pursuits continue around the world every day. In 1961 there was a massive effort to relocate monuments which would be flooded by the expansion of the Aswan Dam in Egypt. The famous monument of Abu Simbel and also other monuments such as that at Philae only survive today as tourist attractions because of rescue archaeology. Even the wonderful inscriptions at Amada would have been flooded were it not for their work. Today, 25 miles south of Kabul in Afghanistan, there is a race to record as much of a Buddhist monastery as possible. Maiz Anyak sits on top of a copper mountain, and it will be destroyed by a mining process. Rescue archaeologists are rushing to record as much as they can before this site is lost forever. In Guatemala, the La Danta complex in the Mirador Basin is at serious risk of crumbling in on itself. This site was once one of the most impressive Mayan complexes in all of Mesoamerica, and when compared to the Great Pyramid of Giza, it is truly impressive. However, years of neglect and slash and burn deforestation techniques being used in the Amazon are slowly but surely destroying this site 
and limiting the amount of time that we have to study it. Some of the most famous excavations in the world, such as Coppergate in York, started out as a short-term rescue archaeology project. Rescue archaeology continues to unearth surprising finds every day. In 2007, in the shadow of Nelson's Column, the famous church of St. Martin in the Fields wished to expand a wing of the church. A rescue excavation was undertaken, and important information about Roman London was unearthed, including a very impressive late Roman limestone sarcophagus. Without rescue archaeology, much of our history would literally be lost forever. This is the beauty of rescue archaeology. We never know quite what we're going to find. So, rescue archaeology is extremely important. Not least because we never know what we're going to find when we do go in to do a rescue excavation. Often, this is in the face of a development, uh, so there'd be extreme pressure from the people who want to go ahead with the building project. Sometimes it can be the result of an environmental shift. Sometimes the monument or the site itself may be about to collapse under its own weight and the excavation has to take place, the investigation has to take place um, just to understand anything about that site. Surely this makes sense and in, uh, in the, in, if, when one considers that uh, archaeology is a limited resource like oil um, it's absolutely in, uh, vital that we continue with rescue archaeology and we continue to value those moments of insight that we get because once the archaeology is gone, it's gone. So these issues are very pertinent and, um, uh, and they do tie in somewhat with, um, with the previous A to Z video, uh, quality, well, quantity versus quality. Um, and it's certainly something that I feel very strongly about. So, uh, that's been our uh, rescue archaeology. Um, hopefully this video has been interesting and all useful. If you have any comments, feel free to comment below. Um, of course, please do subscribe to the channel by clicking uh, on the button above. Um, we do have a Facebook page. All you need to do is uh, look for Archeo Soup Productions on Facebook and click like. And um, anything that I post on that page, um, you will see almost immediately. Because sometimes I don't quite manage to fit things in onto videos. Um, and also, as well, uh, another way uh, that you can get in touch with me is to use the Archeo Soup at Gmail. Uh, email address as displayed on the channel homepage and if you have any questions um, that you would like me to answer via the questions of doom series all you need to do is send me a question and I'll get back to you uh, via video. So until next time thank you very much.